All the way from the start, I can feel it in my heart, like All the way from the start Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. This is part two in the video series where we are mixing a verse from top to bottom using only Waves plugins. This is by request. And if you missed the first part of the video where we mixed the lead verse vocal, I'm going to put a link to that in the corner so you can check that out. But uh, let me go ahead and play back what we did in that video. This is the vocal chain that we built for the lead. I'm going to uh, mute that and then we'll bring in the uh, mixed version that we worked on so that you can hear what we did. And then we're going to move into mixing the background vocals in this video. I ain't trying to wait your time. Need to know if you be mine. Play no games with you, girl. Nah, need you to know that, girl, I'm serious. Huh. Come and f*** with me if you curious. So that was the original unmixed. And then using our Waves plugins and Studio Rack in the last video, this is what we did. I ain't trying to wait your time. Need to know if you be mine. Play no games with you, girl. Nah, need you to know that, girl, I'm serious. Come and f with me if you're curious. Huh. Still wanna keep this thing mysterious. Gonna give you all this love and you want it. Oh, oh, oh. Let's jump into mixing our background vocals. So I'm gonna mute the verse for now and we're gonna unmute all of our background vocals. And let's just hear what we've got here. Let's slide our cycle back. So some cool stuff there. So first of all, I have routed all of our background vocals to the same aux. We're going to process them with the same vocal chain. Now, a couple of you may be wondering why I would process all the background vocals this way. It's because these are really just different pitches and layers of a similar delivery. So I may uh, process the ad libs on certain tracks differently, but with this, I want them to sound cohesive and I want to process all of these in a similar fashion. So for the sake of time here, and because I think it's going to work well in this particular instance with our backgrounds, we are actually going to copy the vocal chain that we used on the leads, and we're going to place that on our backgrounds, and we're going to make quite a few adjustments to it. But I think it'll be a good starting point especially in the case that your backgrounds were recorded with the same mic in the same setting, a lot of times in the same uh, day or session, then uh, things are going to be pretty similar. So there's no point in wasting your time going back and resetting the gate and those initial EQ, reductive EQs that we did with the lead in the first video. So let's go ahead and uh, put Studio Rack back on our aux track where our backgrounds are, are located. I'm going to go back to the verse lead and we're going to copy this preset, this is another cool feature of a studio rack is that we can take this whole vocal chain, just go to copy preset, go over here and we're going to load paste preset and boom, there's our entire vocal chain from the, uh, the verse lead. And now we have it on our backgrounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off, we're going to redo probably the reverb, uh, the delay as well. And then we're going to do some different doubling. Let's make some edits to the compression as well, depending on what's going on here. So I'm going to compress these a little bit more just because I want to get more of a glued sound. We're going to adjust the EQ also. So now that I have this set up, a lot of you are going to be asking, well, why didn't you do the blending first? I like to actually give myself a little bit of compression, a little bit of that pre-processing that we've got here with the EQ so that I've got a better idea of what is going on and where I'm going to kind of end up. And now I go into uh, balancing the backgrounds and kind of blending things and panning things. And uh, again, it just gives you a little bit of a head start and a little less guesswork. So let's go ahead and start doing a quick blend. I'm going to try and do this for sake of time in the video here. So I'm going to bring these down. Let's just do them in pairs right now. There's some really high ones. Seven. 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 
So once I get that blend, then I can now blend them with the lead just by using our ox fader here. Like a surfer, like a surfer. And I'm going to make them a little wider. Like a surfer, let me see you drop it open work, ma. I ain't trying to wait your time, need to know if you... All right, so that's a good start. Now let's go over the EQ, and I'm going to take off some more of the lows here. Let's go up to about... 270. I don't want a lot of low end here. Uh, let's do 150. And I'm going to really up that high end because I want these to stand out a little bit more. Like a server. And you will notice that we're getting a little bit of red here on the VEQ. It's okay. It's the Studio Rack plugin telling me that I'm a little hot, but uh, you can see as we feed the de and things, we're not getting any uh, nasty clipping or anything. Like a Let me see you drop it open work I ain't trying to wait your time need all right, so now the next key with backgrounds is I like to add a lot bigger space to separate them because uh, you know reverb can be used to uh, give us a good separation between the lead and the background vocals. So we're going to do something with a little bit longer uh, decay time, and I'm not going to EQ it quite as heavily in the high end, but we are going to roll off still once again that 500 that we talked about in the previous video, and it's going to be a little bit wetter. Seven. Sounds pretty cool already. So let me go back to the uh, gate, though. I'm going to bring that down a little bit because I can hear a couple of little parts getting chopped. I'd rather have a little bit of noise than chop out parts of the performance, you know, and make it sound unnatural. So I'm also going to go up to reverb type. I'm going to switch this. Let's try maybe a church. Oh, that's nice. All right, now let's add a delay here. We're just going to do something pretty cool with this. I'm going to go to a faster, maybe a 16th ping pong. Let's hear what that sounds like. Like a server. Let me see you drop it open work, ma. I ain't trying to waste your time. Need to know if you be mine. Play no games with your girl. Nah, need you to know that girl, I'm serious. Uh, come and f with me if you're curious. Uh, still wanna keep this thing mysterious. Gonna give you all this love and you want it. So as you can hear, we're getting a nice wide sound for our backgrounds. And again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel with some of your vocal chains. If you've got something that's working, and again, it's something that was recorded in, with the same mic, same performer, then we can get a little head start and then just making a couple of adjustments based on your intuition and what the mix is calling for. We can go in and add what we need to. And uh, with the flexibility of Studio Rack, we could easily just copy that vocal chain from the lead. All right, y'all, so I hope that was helpful in terms of mixing your background vocals and building a vocal chain that's going to help differentiate those takes from your lead, make them wider, more exciting. If you missed the first video on mixing the lead vocals, again, I'll put a link to that. And in the last video, we're gonna do something cool with the ad-libs in this track, processing them in a similar way with Studio Rack and Waves plugins once again. So stay tuned for that video. If you learned anything in this lesson, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing. We'll talk to you soon.